Hi, I'm Beth Guckenberger, and it's the middle of summer, a time of the year when things kind of naturally slow down. And it's been a summer for me unlike almost any summer before I can remember. And it's changed because of something that happened to me, something I learned about in January of this year. I was participating in a sermon series at my own church, and I was assigned a particular week. I didn't get to choose the content. We were in a series about the invitations that Jesus has for us, and my pastors assigned me the Sunday that we were to talk about Jesus' invitation for us to rest. And I told them right off the bat, oh, I don't think I'll be very good at this. I don't have much authority in this area. I don't even know what I think about rest. I just know I'm not very good at it. I had just traditionally thought of rest like a timeout, and timeout didn't sound right, and I didn't like to be timed out. So as infrequently as possible, I chose rest as an option. And they challenged me to to study and to speak from that place of weakness to a congregation as vulnerably as I could. And so the first thing I did was open my Bible and read different places in the Bible where the Lord talks about rest. And as you can imagine, it's all the way from Genesis to Revelation. He talks about rest um, regularly because it's important to him. And in that rest, I was learning, I, I, I found in the original language, the word to be still, to be quiet, to rest is hikaso. And I found it in some places I was expecting to find it, but then I found it in this passage in Genesis that just it like made my mind go Phew. Because in Genesis chapter 4, there's this conversation between the Lord and Cain. Cain is about to kill his brother Abel, and the Lord says to Cain, Sin is crouching at your door. And you have to be careful. You have two choices. You'll either master it or it'll master you. And I've taught on that passage before, especially when I'm talking about generational sin and some of the kids that we serve. And I talk about the sin that's at my door is different than the sins at your door because of our families of origin and different life experiences. So I was not expecting to find in the sentence right before it, in Genesis chapter four, it says, if you do what is right, if you do what is well, your face will be lifted up. If you don't do what is right, then sin is crouching at your door. And that, that word that we translate as well or right is actually this hakaso verb. So it might be better translated like, if you are still, if you are quiet, if you are resting, your face will be lifted up. Like you'll be fixed on him. That makes sense. But if you are not still and if you're not quiet and if you are not resting, then sin is crouching at your door and you have two choices, master it or it'll master you. And all, like for the first time ever and after all these years of walking with the Lord, I thought to myself, wow, rest is given to us as a weapon, a weapon against sin that's threatening to overcome me every single day when my own sin nature and the enemy who wants to take me down come together in that perfect storm and I fall. The gift that God wants to give me to strengthen me for that battle is rest, rest is a weapon. And I was thinking about that in the morning when I was doing my study. Later that day, I was at my son Aiden's basketball game and I was watching the rhythm of a basketball game where you have quarter breaks and half times and timeouts and coaches subbing players in and out so they could sit back and rest to return to the game stronger. And I was thinking if, if Aiden played from the very beginning of the game all the way to the end, by the end his play would be sloppy and he'd be making mistakes. And in this way, by resting, he's stronger for it. And I, it, there was this like moment, because the world tells you, the world tells you you should listen to your heart, follow your heart, but the Bible tells you, Set your mind on things above. Take every thought captive. Renew your thinking. Like Get your head in the right place, and then your heart and behavior will follow. And all of a sudden, like my head was in the right place, and I realized, Lord, you've created rest. as it, Whether it's rest throughout my day or rest at some point in my week or rest in a season like summer can be, Like rest is a gift I have to not escape the things that are hard to not run away from something that's too much or overwhelming. Instead, it's a gift that God gives me to retreat, to pull back, to connect with him, to get what it is that I need for all that is yet to come. Because he's sovereign. He knows what's headed ahead. He, he knows challenges I have, assignments I'm going to have, experiences that are to come, things I need to learn. He knows what's ahead. And he knows in that moment of pulling back to rest in him, I'll be prepared for all that's yet to come. So whether your fall is busy with the school year or the rhythm of your life changes in the months to come, use this time of rest. Use it like a weapon. Use it like the gift it was intended to be and get ready for all that God still has.